Now it's time to consider more advanced functions. You will encounter this type of functions when dealing with the theory of special functions, like the theory of Bessel or hypergeometric equations. Now the function is in front of you, and its regular branch is fixated by the following condition. The branch cut is a segment from negative i to i, and f of plus 0 is equal to 1. And the assignment is as follows. We will find the value of this function at point negative square root of 3. Also, we will find the derivative of this function at point plus 0 and its residue at infinity. So the first thing you should do is to single out branch points. And to this end, we need to expand all their uh, functions under the power of science. For example, z squared plus 1 will be turned into z plus i and z minus i. Well, you should always try to turn this expression to something like z plus minus something. So we need to factor out i and we end up with z minus i to the power of 2 gamma. So in the end, our function becomes the following thing. z plus i to the power of 1 minus gamma and z minus i to the power of 1 plus gamma. And indeed, we see that there are two branch points, z equals minus i and i. And now let's draw a branch cut in a complex plane. So what you probably immediately notice is this strange i to the power of 2 gamma factor in front of our function. Well, this is an undefined number, because what is i? Is it e to i pi by 2? Or maybe it's e to minus 3 pi i by 2? You should always try to avoid that kind of expressions in your final answers. But in your intermediate computations, it's quite acceptable as long as you don't have to compute it. And indeed, we will see that this expression will cancel out from all our answers and uh, we will never compute it in our intermediate calculations. So it's kind of a notation. So what we achieved by this simple transformation is that now our multivalent function is decomposed into a product of two quite transparent expressions. z plus i and z minus i are complex numbers which are easily interpreted as arrows in the complex plane and they are raised into some powers. And now I leave it up to you to prove that this finite branch cut from negative i to i does indeed define a single valid function in a complex plane. You should check it two ways. While finding the asymptotic of this function at large values of z, and while drawing a contour around this branch cut and figuring out the changes of the arguments of the constituents of this function. The next peculiarity of this function is that probably you notice that it's somewhat more complicated than the previous one, because it kind of consists of two simple multivalent functions like g1 of z to the power of 1 minus gamma times g2 of z to the power of 1 plus gamma with this prefactor i to 2 gamma. And the question is how to deal with this? Well, though it consists of the product of two multivalent functions, we will never separate them. They will always enter our intermediate results as a product. So we will treat them as a single entity. And using the same reasoning as before, we will write down a more somewhat general formula for the regular branch of this multivalent function. So let's go. f of z is equal to f of z0, where z0 is our uh, reference point, times the modulus of the ratio of g1 of z divided by g1 of z0 to the power of 1 minus gamma, times the modulus of the second ratio g2 of z divided by g2 of z0, to the power of 1 plus gamma times exponential to the corresponding change of the argument i dot the argument of f. Well, now you probably noticed that I didn't write this i to the power of 2 gamma factor. Well, I leave it up to you to understand why it actually cancels out here. And here we go. Let's proceed and find the value of this function point negative square root of 3. So we draw our reference point, plus 0, which is essentially a 0, but on the right bank of our branch cut, and negative square root of 3. And connect them with some contour. 
and let this counter suck around the branch cut from above. And let's trace the change of the arguments of the constituents of our function. Arrow z minus i. As we see, it rotates by almost 2 pi with the subtraction of this angle, which can be easily identified from the trigonometric considerations. So the tangent of this angle is simply square root of 3. So this angle is pi by 3. And as a result, the change of the argument of z minus i is 2 pi minus pi by 3. So it's 5 pi by 3. Now the change of the argument of z plus i number. And it's the same counterclockwise direction, and we see it's simply pi by 3. Now we can figure out the change of the argument of the entire f function. So delta argument of f consists of the change of the argument of z minus i multiplied by 1 plus gamma plus the change of the argument of z plus i multiplied by 1 minus gamma. And what we obtain is 5 pi by 3 times 1 plus gamma plus pi by 3 times 1 minus gamma, which yields 2 pi plus 4 pi gamma by 3. And now let's plug in all these results into our formula for the regular branch. So f of minus square root of 3 is equal to f of z naught, f of plus 0, which is 1, times the modulus of the ratio of minus square root plus i divided by i to the power of 1 minus gamma times minus square root minus i divided by negative i to the power of 1, 1 plus gamma times exponential to the power of 2 pi i plus 4 pi gamma i by 3. Now the moduli are easily computed. The modulus of minus square root of 3 plus minus i is simply 2. And what we obtain is 2 to the power of 1 minus gamma times 2 to the power of 1 plus gamma. And in the exponential we discard 2 pi i and obtain e to the power of 4 pi i gamma by 3. And the final answer is 4 times the corresponding exponential. So this is how we treat that kind of more involved expressions with power type functions. Now let's proceed and find out the value of its derivative. And here is a complicating point. Once you find the derivative of the multivalid function, you end up with a modified multivalid function, which is however related to the previous one. And the question is, how to compute this value of the modified function once you know the original function. And the key consideration here is you are always able to express your final answer, the modified multivalid function, why the original multivalid function times some single valid function. So let's see how this comes about in this example. So df over dz, we perform a differentiation like a differentiation of the product of two functions. So we get i to the power of 2 gamma, 1 minus gamma times z plus i to the power of minus gamma, times z minus i to the power of 1 plus gamma, and plus the second term, e to the power of 2 gamma, z plus i to the power of 1 minus gamma, times 1 plus gamma, times z to minus i to the power of gamma. And what we do in the first term, we multiply and divide it by the number z plus i. So now in the denominator we have z plus i to the power of 1 minus gamma. And we immediately notice that in the denominator we have our original function f of z. And the same trick goes for the second term. This time we multiply it by z minus i and divide by z minus i. And again we collect our original function in the denominator. So now we can rewrite our expression for the derivative as follows f of z times 1 minus gamma divided by z plus i plus f of z times 1 plus gamma divided by z minus i. And as a result, we obtained what we desired. Our derivative is our original function 
times some single valued expression 1 minus gamma divided by z plus i plus 1 plus gamma divided by z minus i. And we simply plug in z equals plus 0. So df over dz and z equals plus 0 is equal to f of plus 0, which is 1, times minus gamma over i plus gamma over minus i, which gives us 2i gamma. And that's our final answer. And this is how it always works. So you will find it useful when you, for example, compute the integral con containing that kind of multi functions and you need to find the residue of this function at some point. Thank you.